welcome to Ungimmick. Uh, we are here for another episode of our podcast, and we are joined by the usual crew. We have Alex Moreau, Connor McDonald, Matthew O'Neill, and Sanjeev Vinod. My name is Gonzalo Souza. I will be your host for today. And uh, I, my voice sounds a little bit too much like a like a game show presenter. I just realized I was giving it a very weird. Uh, I, love I would like to introduce <laughs> me as Alexandre. Stop. Alex, uh, Alexandre Moreau. Like, do you want me to give it the full? <laughs> Alexandre, the full? <laughs> Alexandre, Alexandre Moreau. Um, perfect. I'll keep that. I'll keep that in the notes for for next time. We kind of actually, <laughs> honestly, Gonzalo, the intro sounded good. It did. Intro sounded really good. Great. I'll I'll just yeah. then I won't I won't ever Thank do you. it again. I'll just use the same. Uh, the same thing in post-production. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, welcome everybody yeah. to our show. Um, we are very excited to be presenting yet another episode. Uh, but before we begin, we are going to start with our first segment of the day. As always, our one-minute recommendation today presented by Alexandre. 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 Sorry. Alexandre. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, got, I really got to make it. Got to make it. Three out of five of us can say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Um. Obviously, you're giving him a one-minute wreck. This is my first one. How could I not one-minute wreck the jerks? Come on. Uh, the jerks changed so many magicians. There's, I mean, if you don't know the jerks, and a bunch of people in this call did not know the jerks before knowing yep. me, they now live by yep. the jerks. And this, the jer- I, another one that did that, the jerks is the one that did that. So I'm not going to even say more. It's just hands down the best magic block. Like, hands down, not even close. It, it's very, it's very opinionated. It is very tuned toward like social magic that you know, making things look like miracles and deep experiences. So you might, the amount you take away really depends on how, how in which circumstances you perform magic. But everyone will get a lot out of reading the jerk. I don't want to say more. I want to leave this amazing experience of discovering up to everyone. Spell it. So the jerks would be uh, the. I think I don't need to spell that one. And jerks is J E R. Next. You just go online and find it, right? Exactly. Yeah. You, there, there's First a new post Google. every day. He has a new uploading schedule, but you can read the post back to 20, like 15, something like that, for completely free. Days. For completely free. It's, it's. I mean, you can beat that. It's you one really of the greatest can. things ever. No, this is the yeah. best recommendation you've ever given to me, Alex. Uh, so I'm very happy that you're breaking it to this to this podcast as well. Much better than get yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, thank you, Alex. The Jerks is definitely something everyone should check out. If if people are taking anything down in the in this podcast, this the first minute is already super important. Check out. The I would jerks. sell a kidney if, to get a support spot. Like if I lost my support <laughs> spot, I will legit sell a kidney. Yeah, a minus four <laughs> sale so that I can get one. Where do you guys get kids' knees? Matt, just not it's now. Typical, Matt. We are doing so know. well. You guys can get that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll no, no, no! I'm not right. cutting that. Out. I'm leaving that in. This is going to be public shame for oh, everybody great. to hear you making. <laughs> well, you're the guys who have. I I'm not even going to go. Do not, do not, to do not make another joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Alex, for that uh, for that recommendation to start us off. Uh, we have our topic today. Uh, we're going to be talking about performance anxiety, and to give us a little bit about that, uh, the man with the research today is Connor McDonald. Kayla Woo! McDonald. <laughs> Kaylin McDonald. Yes, that's right. Please address me as Kaylin McDonald. So, <laughs> performance anxiety is the fear of exposing yourself and performing in front of an audience. Now, the solution to get rid of this uh, stage fright is to simply just throw yourself into the face of the bull. Now, the solution does create the infamous paradox, not being able to perform because you're scared, yet the only way to terminate this fear is to perform, right? So this problem is not only uh, a problem with magicians, but with people all over in different types of fields like theater, public speaking, etc. So uh, I kind of want to talk about today how it manifests. Is there a way to calm it down or is there a solution to the infamous paradox? We are four minutes and 39 seconds into the recording, and Connor is already asking for a solution. We, we normally have 40 more minutes to fill of air time. We, we have the whole 40 minutes to get to the conclusion, yeah, so basically we don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what? Because it's a hard question. I like it. It's a hard question. It's a question without, without one, definitive, one definitive answer, that's for sure. Yeah. And I think the one of the most valuable resources is, I mean, 
all the all the big guys, you know, all the big dogs that have to perform on really the their A level or else they're at risk of losing their spot, either in front of thousands of people. And all I think almost all of them have written in interviews or in books or write ups how they felt and now how they feel and how they dealt with that. And it's quite clear that no two of them have had the same solution. So I think that definitely points us to the fact that there isn't one, a single way to achieve that. I think you touched on a great point. And elaborating on that, there are multiple solutions, but I think there's some standout approaches, mm-hmm. um, which whether or not the most effective, they're definitely the most publicized. And I think there is some weight to them. Uh, th- th- this is definitely going to be more public speaking oriented. I apologize, but I think like Connor brought up, the same lessons apply in, in every field. At least how we do it there, You one is just the dive straight into the deep end. Just go to more tournaments. Just force yourself to just stand up in front of people who are judging you and who have no reason to care about you. And then when you do that over and over, the nerves, the nerves never go away, by the way. I'm sure all the performers here can attest. Every time you go out for a show, you're still just as nervous. It's just you know how to act despite those nerves. So one approach is diving into the deep end. And the other approach is this progressive incremental sort of process where you slowly uh, allow yourself more exposure, where first you're speaking in front of a video camera, next in front of your family, next in front of your friends, and then slowly you build it up until you are speaking in front of larger audiences. So what are your guys' thoughts on the approaches? What are other approaches? Which of these? I I really want to hear about your guys' own journeys, to be honest, because I think that'll shed a lot more insight than hyper. Yeah, I definitely have some really interesting uh, uh, things that, that immediately came to mind. So in my life, I'd have, I've had two performing areas. Uh, I'm magician, magic, obviously, but also uh, I grew up, um, my parents put me in figure skating, actually, when I was, since I was really, really young. And I would be so nervous before a skating competition that I was shaking so hard, it looked like I was con- like convulsing. I was so nervous because I didn't feel prepared. In magic, my routines are rehearsed 1,000 times I know my lines. I know I 100% confident in it. And then you have a little bit in there. If it's not too sure, that's almost, that becomes exciting. Mm. But when you feel, when skating, just because it takes longer to prepare because it's, uh, it's an endurance thing. You can't rehearse 50 programs. You can only do it three or four times or mm. mo- maximum 10, 11 times in a day, but then you're completely exhausted afterwards. Uh, a if you feel not prepared, it's really terrifying. That's that's what I what I have to say. So you you're putting down one of the main um, causes of performance anxiety to a lack of preparation, in in your case. Possibly, yeah. Uh, or that's one of the that's one of the fixable. I think if you have all the factors that contribute to performance anxiety unpreparedness is one that's definitely fixable uh, with, with time. And hey, can I just say something that I think might be interesting? I think it's not mm. so much unpreparedness, but the, like, the feeling of unpreparedness. Because mm, some people true. that are unprepared feel unprepared. Some people that are very well prepared feel, feel unprepared. unprepared. That's true. Uh, also, maybe like Sanjeev was saying, uh, doing it a bunch of times, a lack of familiarity with the environment. So you feel unprepared because you you can't anticipate what's going to happen. And so you can't prepare in advance for all the possible scenarios. In, in my case, that would, um, but I guess that would, that would come down to a personal thing. But in my case, I don't like to feel overly prepared because then I get obsessive about it. And I try to control every single little variable of my, of my environment, which leads to even more anxiety because now I, 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 I'm not thinking about ways to calm down my anxiety. I'm anxious about all the things that I can't control or that I haven't even thought of that I need to know how to control. So I've learned to tone it down and almost embrace that um, that normal level of unpreparedness that you can't prepare for. Or I would argue that you you shouldn't to, to a degree. But Connor, I think you, you'd like to add something. Yeah, I was, that's, a really, that's a very interesting point. Almost being like not being prepared enough can be definitely a huge con- contribution to performance anxiety. But Riding then also the being over-prepared. Yeah, being over-prepared, being like, it has to go this way. And mm-hmm. if it, it, like if something goes wrong, it, it has to go this way. And if something goes wrong, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
where you have to be able to just kind of go with the flow and be like, okay, if I mess up, I mess up. It's okay. Like it's okay to be bad, nice. right? It happens. So I think that's a very interesting point. Matthew, Al almost paradoxically, if you're unprepared, then you're prepared for the unpreparedness. So you're still prepared because you have the expectations and you know intellectually, okay, this is places where I'm going to improvise and I'm confident in my ability to improvise in the unknown. Is not the word I think that you're looking. Yeah, for. I'm gonna have to disagree on or that. Then one. Then ready for it. <laughs> that you never improvise, right? It's always you are choosing between a new outcome. So yeah, I, I like ready for it. Or you're not you're not rigid like Connor Bardo. I think that's a great point. You're not yeah, going be, be like this water. Is exactly how it's gonna go. All right, Bruce Lee. No, no. I mean, <laughs> no, yeah, just right. I mean, didn't say that. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah, he did. That's that's obviously the reference I was making. But I think when you're going on to gigs, you know, there's nothing worse. And you're about to go on stage and like. 10 minutes before the lighting guy comes up and says, oh, this thing, gig, how do you want to fix that? You're like, at that moment, you, you just decompose. You no longer have a spine. Yeah. You fall to the ground. <laughs> you just that's why I, I, when, I, when, I go to go, when I go to gigs, I always go with a buddy, an addition buddy that's not going to perform. And he's like, Ooh. he's like my director. So wow, I prepare huge. my things with him. He's usually a friend, so I do the same thing with, with his gigs. And all once I've discussed what I want with the people in there, like obviously the, the, the speaker and everything, he now knows he is in charge. I am now performance mode. And now let me say something that people that is very rare, and I've only encountered a couple of people that experience this like like this. The moments before going in stage is probably one of the best feelings in the world for me. I don't feel anxiety, I just feel almost cathartic. I, it's, it's really hard to describe that moment for going on stage. You're like, these people don't know anything about. So everything you've ever thought, everything you've put into your performance, it's about now. So I always put in the, the, the really eerie, like an eerie and deep music. I go in a corner talking to no one, listen to my music, warm up my fingers, warm up my voice alone. And that feeling it's cathartic. Like, okay, this is it. Like, this is, you're creating a world right now. And it's, as you see, I'm having trouble describing it. It's one of the best feelings in the world. It is a hard feeling to describe. And I, I know I feel it too. Uh, and I think that's a, a fine line that we sometimes um, walk in, in terms of, of the definition between that, that uh, I'm going to create a word, but catharticism, ism, something. Uh, so Sanjeev is the linguistics catharsis. major. So cath I catharsis. Catharsis. catharsis? Yeah. Again, my, my foreignness coming, coming to the foreground. If I'm uh, wrong, I'm leaving the podcast, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, I is, that accountable. is that a promise? Is that a promise? Did we find our, our way to kick Sanjeev Wait a second. Out? <laughs> Wait a Sanjeev, second. we need you. You're our reference. Come on. <laughs> Go on, Gonzalo. No, but I'm saying, uh, definition-wise, that, that catharsis, and that, I guess that's the word we're going to go with, uh, between catharsis I'm and right. anxiety. I'm right. I'm just going to say I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there is a fine line, is the, or what we uh, generally attribute as butterflies. Right, that, that 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 feeling, that of excitement as well, because anxiety can manifest as as excitement. Um, I think it comes down, and we feel that way, because it's it's a new environment. Regardless if we've done it a thousand times, if we've controlled all the variables, we are always expecting something a little bit different. We are always expecting uh, one variable shift. And that's why we, and that's, that's what I love. That's why I really like um, performing. So I share that feeling with you, Alex. Yeah. I just want to quick that because I think I found a way to describe it. <laughs> oh, great. And, um, I look like, I look like a zombie before going on stage. Nice. People are like, are you okay? And you know what? I feel amazing. And the sound I would associate with that is white noise. Mm. I'm not thinking you're just sort of leveling and it's white noise inside your brain. You're just taking everything in, but you're not producing anything. And obviously, you look like people are like, oh, are you okay? Hell yeah, I'm okay. I wouldn't change this for the world. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to, to add that. No, that's, that's super interesting. Maybe an improvement on the first point is that not necessarily prepared then, but confidence, confident that you're going to be good. You know, if, you're hmm. un, if you are scared to screw up, then I think that could manifest itself in anxiety. Because look, I, I, like Gonzalo was saying, even if he's not 100% prepared, he, he knows he's going to improvise, but 
What he also knows is that he's going to go on stage and he's going to be likable. He's going to do a good performance, no matter what happens. And uh, he, it's sort of interesting. a guarantee in his mind, maybe. <laughs> Confidence is an important thing. It's one, one of the, I think it's one of the, the most important thing before you go on stage is that you feel confidence in, in what you're doing. Because if you don't, that's the first step for your legs to start shaking and for you to crumble. It's, the, it's your, your main pillar, uh, at least for me, it, it, it must be. If I'm not confident on something and I'm presenting it, I feel like I messed up in the process. I, I haven't finished the process of constructing that piece. The curtain is about to open and I'm like, um, sh- uh, what is about that one part of the show? What am I going to do there? Is this good enough? It, if I'm debating it as the curtain is about to open, yeah, I have messed up in the process. It wasn't ready to go up there yet. And then be, it's, then it's mm. not anxiety, it's fear. Yeah, it's wow. It's Isn't point. public speaking the number one fear in the United States? Yeah. More than death. Ahead of death. I believe so, yeah. Ahead of death. <laughs> Ahead of death. Wow. Yeah, I think we're jumping scary. past I death. Know. We're saying magicians are the manliest because we jump past death for the well, performance. I, that's my actually, argument. I think public speakers are the manliest, my guy. <laughs> but but <laughs> uh, like, oh, yeah, sure. yeah, ladies, you heard it here. See, we're we're the manliest, not the bodybuilders oh, of the manliest. <laughs> Hearing the word manly in Matthew's mouth looks disgusting. <laughs> it's it's just, the figure skater. It just is weird something's feeling. wrong. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, I'm oh sorry, god. Connor. I think you wanted to say something. Yeah, oh, I don't sorry. even remember. I oh god, what were we talking about? <laughs> I don't sorry. even remember. Oh, it's your Matthew. topic, man. You should... <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Oh, oh, I remember, I remember. I was gonna say now, what about now? This this is a personal opinion, and this is very just opinionated question. So I'm very excited to see what you guys have to say. What's what do you guys think about faking it? Like if you don't have that confidence, <laughs> fake it until you get it. Yeah. Like, just force yourself to just something, just force yourself to just be like, I'm confident. Even the confidence I'm talking the... about is not fakeable. The confidence well, no, I'm, I'm referring, you can't fake. No, it's, it's, it's that, that the true feeling in your gut that you know you're ready. You know you've exactly. got this. That, that's you can't absolutely fake true. that, but you can, you can fake the rational, you can rationalize confidence. You can't people... put a feeling in your gut. But it's People a chicken versus through that. which came first, the chicken or the egg? You have the good performance and you have the confidence. You can't, if you start with a good performance or the confidence, you know, it'll, it's a cycle. Uh, you have to either come in with no confidence, but an incredible show so that people reciprocate and you get the confidence, or you start with the confidence and the show, you start with the overconfidence and the show is like, eh, but it's going to, it's going to snowball. What am I, do you guys kind of see what I'm saying? level out self-sustain yeah yeah it's going to sort of balance out eventually yeah with more experience as sanjeev was saying i think there is this fake it till you make it mentality that's been perpetuated and i'm not saying it's bad uh i'm saying it works to an extent like yeah You're saying I think it's there's, bad. A, there's a yeah i'm very politely saying like i'm i'm saying it's short-term fine okay it's like starting out magic like learning just tricks off youtube right like i I full on did that. That is how I started. And if it wasn't for YouTube exposure, I would not be here. Right. So I cannot, I can't have a, have a noble approach and say, Oh my God, I'm only going to read from books from now because that's the good magic. No, we all start somewhere and fake it till we make it is short term effective. But I think the issue, and let's put this into a framework. There's this book uh, by Mark Manson, famous uh, personal development author. It's called models, right? And models is a almost a pickup theory dating book on the surface, but it's like a personal development book in disguise weirdly. And he talks about this framework of true confidence versus false confidence, okay? False confidence is where you are trying to seem like you're confident, where the motivation for your confidence is other people's perceptions. And you think it works, obviously, in some situations, like if you're just at a bar or at a party, sure, it's fine because people don't really get to know you there. But the issue with it is, you lead to so many other wormholes when you're trying to impress other people. Toxic masculinity, where you're just being a horrible person, playing hard to get. And this is obviously a different sphere, but you can easily connect that to magic, right? There's that 
Facebook post we were all really outraged about that you judge the quality of magic by people's reactions. That's that's the next theme. So please don't slide too much. <laughs> um, oh, so that's okay, a sneak then, peek for yeah, later. Sneak peek yeah. into the it's next a mystery podcast. tool. <laughs> that we that is going to be a, a very passionate opinion Ooh. of my part. We're like, getting people hooked that. on already. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, like false confidence and true confidence. I think there is a distinction there, and. I can try to posit solutions in the second half. Don't want to spoil that yet. But what do you guys, I want to hear more thoughts about is, can people tell that difference? Because I feel like in some situations, yes. they can't. They can. I don't so think 100%. I give people enough credit for that. 100%. I think people see right through somebody that's, you know, that's not, that doesn't feel genuine. I think people have gen- genuinity sensors in their brains. That's true. You can, you can sort of tell something's off. You can't, you can't point it out what it is. It's mm, like agreed. doing a fishy move. The, the people will be like, oh, I didn't see how he did that, but something was up. He held the cards in a weird way. You know? Yeah, that's true. Oh, no. I disagree. With that, we'll, we'll pick it up right in the okay, second half cool. because wow, we really reached awkward. our halfway point. No, no, it's great. It's great. We've introduced the point. We'll keep the, the interest high as we do our little break. Uh, and we will start uh, our break with our shameless social media plug. Uh, because we are on social media. Of course, you can listen to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Hopefully, we're hoping that we can actually do this properly and put it in all those places. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also uh, listen to it on YouTube. We are on youtube.com slash on gimmick, and you can see our beautiful faces. Um, well, and, and Matthews. Uh, <laughs> wow. All right. Ooh. You know what? You can't say that. Yes, you can. Yes, I I have just. I got um, nothing. I know he's wrong. <laughs> no, but you can check us out on YouTube. YouTube.com slash ungimmick. Uh, we are on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash ungimmick. But the best way to get in contact with us would be on Instagram at ungimmick. Uh, and because I know I'll be asked to spell it, it's U-N-G-I-M-M-I-C-K-E-D. That's oh. ungimmick. Um, <laughs> I feel like well, I, I'll have to do that at least once an episode. And so it's, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm really going to get in the grind. Um, we're doing the, Gonzalo's elbow reveal at 100 followers. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, I, I, I got I to keep it hidden for now. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> this is a perk for the YouTube, for the YouTube uh, watchers or listeners. Uh, my last plug before we go into our, our segment uh, is for our Patreon. Uh, of course, we are just five friends uh, having fun and doing a podcast, just bringing our topics and our normal discussions to the world. But if you do want to to support us and help us and uh, in getting this um, better and more professional, whatever you would like to call it, uh, you can check us out on Patreon. We are on patreon.com slash on gimmick. Um, that's that's the, the best way to really connect with our journey is through there. Uh, but thank you for it. If you have joined our Patreon, thank you for listening. That is the main thing. Uh, we the just... perks include both elbows. <laughs> I should I should add that on the on the Patreon. Uh, can well... we just take a moment to appreciate that Matthew no. isn't our host? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be. I go off topic so much. <laughs> you couldn't be, <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, we have reached our halfway point, so that's time for our breather crimp presented today by Sanjeev. Yeah, so uh, as you guys can tell, I definitely like wake up during the podcast, and so <laughs> at the beginning, I say like a couple sentences, and I just start talking. I don't stop. So I apologize. <laughs> um, first of all, so it's ungimmicked with an ed. Uh, there's a d at the end, but word final devoicing in English, so it's pronounced as a t. But for some reason, um, Gonzalo doesn't pronounce his word final stop, so it comes as ungimmicked, but that does have an ed. Uh, just I feel attacked uh, for my pronunciation. <laughs> that was I definitely. Am, listen, I'm an yeah. immigrant. I I deserve <laughs> respect. You Ooh. see, Sanjeev cares about the elbows, so he's defending me on this one. <laughs> it was more of a linguistic approach. I just found it interesting. I think it's really cool. Yeah, it, it's, it's like the tsunami Sanjeev principle time. math, right? It's not about being accurate. It's about being correct. Oh, I, I don't care about opinions. It's about being correct. <laughs> If it's anyway. half a percent more, it's half a percent more, and you can't yeah, do anything right. about it. Right. Breather crib. Let's jump right in. Um, I have a couple things to touch on. Uh, the first is, unfortunately, uh, Roy's passing um, just, just some time ago after catching coronavirus, uh, and he was a legend in magic. I have to be honest, I unfortunately did not get a chance to really personally connect with him because he was before my time, and his style is very different from what I do. 
um, but it still it needs to be acknowledged. And another one that I connected a little more, the Illusionist Stackwatch released recently. So here's what I'm going to say about it. Here's what I'm going to say about it. I think it's important for everyone to look into this product simply to form their own opinion of it because I believe that it is at the intersection of so many issues that both that we bring up in our podcast and that magicians are thinking about now. And so I think it's important as an activity of self-reflection. I will not say anything more on it and none of you guys will say anything more on it either. And we'll move on. Fantastic. Fantastic. No, that's, that's true. I, I really think just to, I'm not going to form an opinion, I promise, but I, I it's true that the existence of a sack watch really is systemic of everything that's happening in magic. I think it's a, an amazing point you're bringing up, Sanjeev. Sanjeev, thank you so much for that uh, breather crimp. And uh, with that, our halfway point is finished. We are ready to jump right back into the second half. And I want to bring it back to the point that I so rudely interrupted. Uh, we were talking about true versus fake confidence and how the audiences actually can spot that and i think matthew was talking about the the moves where sometimes people think oh i don't know what he did but there was a move with the cards there so something must have happened so i alex i want to to hear from you because you were you were uh, touching on that yeah I, I think people people sense that now some people might be more sensitive than others but i think that once again and i've said this a million times in the center of everything i value not only in the middle of magic but in the middle of everything is intent and if your intent is to look good, uh, you've got bigger problems. I think people can see right through fake confidence. And some people are very good at fake confidence. And some specters aren't very good at figuring it out. So it can pass off. But using that example to justify you faking confidence, you know, I'm a mathematician. If you use an example to prove something, you're, you're way off. Hmm. I see. Uh, I don't disagree, but I don't completely agree. And here's my reasoning. I think. I, I do agree with what you brought up that a lot of people are really good at it. And in a sense, I think to some extent, a lot of confidence is a little more fake confidence than we, than we think, because mm. I mean, as, as much credit as we'd like to give ourselves, like we do, we are teenagers and regardless of whether we're teenagers or not, I think to some extent, we still base a lot more than we'd like to on public perception, right? That's, that is how we're wired. That, that is how we're wired. And as a result, I think, for example, um, any, any situation where you look at someone, you say, oh, wow, they're so charismatic. They're so confident. They, they, they speak so well. I, I can guarantee you in the majority of those cases, that person doesn't feel that confident. That person doesn't feel that charismatic, but rather what's guiding their approach is more of a screw it. Like there, there is nothing I can do to control public perception. And so rather than trying to, to look good, I'm just not going to try. And it's almost an acceptance of this I am average, an acceptance of this is who I am, just, oh, well, I, this is what I have to work with. I guess this is what I'm going to put out that comes across to us as confidence. So I think there's still a fundamental disconnect there that at least I believe the vast majority of us can't tell apart. I'm going to ask you to, to please um, explain that a little bit more. You, so, because I, I didn't quite understand. You're saying mm -hmm. that the acceptance of your averageness is what leads you to standing out? Okay, so I, I like that you brought that up. I think it's one of the pieces of advice that's, that's definitely changed my life. Um, again, Mark Manson, different book though. The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. I don't know if we swear on this, but I think we do swear on this podcast. But no, yes, I, I bleep it out. Uh, post-production. <laughs> post-production yeah. is a beautiful thing. Let me skip a little post-production for you. Yeah, so The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. It's a New York Times bestseller or whatever. Whenever a personal development book becomes mainstream, you always doubt it a little. Uh, but this one, the general philosophy that it posits is don't try. Just don't try. Just stop giving Fs about things. Just just absolutely stop. Because I think we've all realized this this weird counterintuitive thing when, when, we, when we do try so hard at something, we fail. And then suddenly we're like, you know what, just whatever. And then we stop trying. And then suddenly it works out for us. Suddenly it succeeds. And he believes that at the root of that mentality is this acceptance that this is a cold approaching idea as well. We don't matter. We, we just literally don't matter, both in the spec of, of humanity as a whole and in other people's memories. If you do something bad, if you mess up, if you say something awkward, no one cares. In that moment, maybe they're like, haha, that was weird. 
But literally a day later, they don't care anymore. It's almost a little egotistical of us to have such a high opinion of how much people remember us. They really don't. If you walk up to someone, make a fool of yourself, okay. A day later, they don't remember. If you completely botch a show, those people don't remember. And again, this is not an excuse to be bad. This is a justification to try as hard as you want in the sense of just do what you want. Just be as good as you want and completely stop caring about what other people's perception is. And that almost counterintuitively makes it work for you and makes you seem confident. Yeah. That was um, my point. I, I, super, I totally agree that it's almost an issue of self-consciousness, of being self-conscious of what others are going to think of you later. Because um, I know Darren Brown said it in a show, but he's quoting someone else when he says, we stop caring what, other think of, what others think of us when we realize how seldom they do. Ooh. You know? Yeah, right. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's, that's that good. hits you on the net, like it's a nail on the head for that that's one. Good, that's good. But um, interesting thing, if you're giving the advice, don't try. Like you kind of did at the end of your point, you got to qualify it with, but you still got to care. Uh, yeah. Don't try. Don't. It's it's so hard to explain. Don't over try. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to put effort, and they're they're gonna see the love. They're gonna see the passion put into it, but you don't want them you don't want to look like you're overcompensating for a lack of substance. And maybe that's where the over trying comes in, what it looks like. I think the, the uh, framework that I put in is, is don't try to impress, just try to express. Mm, and then that makes this cool. makes it a lot that's easier. Interesting. interesting. And you know what, um, the way you talked about that, there's something, and it appears in brain games, by the way, that you can all watch a special on Netflix and Apollo Robbins yes. makes a certain yes. number of appearances there. And they talk about, you know, how people think, how good people think they are at multitasking. Because a lot of people think they're good at multitasking. Yeah. But yeah. They ran tests and no, that's not the case, obviously. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to express an opinion here and say, I think people think they're better at faking confidence than they really are. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that is a way for you to put yourself, to give yourself a good reason to push yourself. Which, you know, once again, the intent is a little iffy, but the result is you put yourself on stage. And what I believe to be the best way to put yourself on stage is nature like the natural and we have this expression in french that ends with and nature comes back galloping which means when you try to fake something things catch up so just put yourself in a, in a circumstance where it's the natural thing to go on stage i'm going to give you a stupid example but i think it's going to make sense a couple of days ago here in the us i don't have too much like magic things most of them are are well are well on their way but uh i was like oh i don't like how this is organized if it stays like this it's not it's not disorganized enough that i'm gonna care but here as you're just gonna say it's not organized so i put everything on the floor from there naturally what do i want to do there's a there's a huge mess on the floor what am i gonna do well now i'm gonna pick it up and organize the best i can wait clarify you're talking about your physical magic stuff that you have in your room yes yes okay. it's in my props so i just have i don't have as many props as like general thing but i had enough props that was starting to become a mess and if it just stayed in that state okay okay you know what good enough but placing everything on the floor, like, okay, now, now I have to do something about it. And in your show, you can take a, a similar approach. Like either this is like, I try to figure out a way to make myself confident enough to step on that stage, but there's no intent there. Or I take the active stance of making that first step onto the stage. Once my face is on the stage, I have no more choice. People are watching me. I have to go for it. And their nature takes over. Interesting. The, it's, I think the jerks also um, talked about this in, in an article like last month, I think. He says, when, you're, when you have to do a task, you don't have to put, like, if I need to write an essay that's going to take me an hour and I'm do not doing anything, I don't need to think about, I need to move myself for one hour. You just need to push yourself to do the first 30 seconds or one it. Once you wrote that title and wrote the first couple of words, then you're in on it, nice. you know, then the ideas start coming and you write. So you have to start thinking about that, those physical first few seconds or first few minutes, depending on what you do. And then you really don't, it's not that you don't have a choice, but naturally you start completing that task. I think that's a good solution, by the way. I think this is a great solution for performance anxiety. I mean, if you can't push yourself, have, have someone physically push you onto stage. Yeah, yeah And that's true. people listening to this probably think I'm joking. I am not. If, if you're scared, have a friend you trust that knows when, when's the time. And that physically puts you on the stage. Now it's up to you. So either you crumble, which you're going to do everything you can not to. In most cases, please, uh, viewer discretion is advised. Check with your psychiatrist. <laughs> if that's something, if you're really terrified, don't throw yourself yeah. into people. But 
for most people, it's just that one bear. And if you can go and if you're on people, either you crumble, but you're gonna do everything you can not to. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the safety behind that, uh, behind the the door, you don't have to expose yourself. So I think that's that would be a a, a viable solution to performance anxiety. It's similar also to um, athletics, where you have like a coach athlete relationship, where the coach is sort of building you up and getting you prepared for it. But your, your friend in magic not, wouldn't necessarily be a coach, but they would take the role of the person that makes you do what you don't want to do to put mm -hmm. you where you want to be. Oh, nice. Matt, well, you're on a roll. Coming out with the quotes, bro. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you're really good at saying things that aren't your own. Yeah, you're great at it. <laughs> Wait, that came across wow. way higher shit <laughs> than it was in my brain. Whoa. Okay, got it. Matt, I love you. I apologize. <laughs> Connor, we haven't heard much of you. Like, how, what are you getting from these discussions? No, I'm, uh, I'm really absorbing all the information. It's taken a little bit of a tangent, but I like where it's going. It's not where I predicted it was going. Still super fun and, and really valuable information that everyone's talking about. I feel like Connor rolled the dice. He liked the topic because he just wanted to learn about it. So he's like, okay, I'm going to be a listener on this <laughs> one. Just, yeah. And you know what, Connor? If you, if you need somebody to physically push you on stage, just shoot me a text. So I mean, that's, no, it, that's what we're doing. We're putting you on the spot. You need to talk now. It's your moment in the podcast. <laughs> okay, so, so Alex, that exactly, that last comment is exactly what I want to talk about. Find people that you trust to be bad in front of, to push yourself. Find a place, find a location, a bar, a, a, like just some little like liquor store even. I don't know, maybe on the streets, right? Find a place to be bad. Find people that you trust to tell you that you're bad, yet to push you to be better. And that is exactly what all of you are for me. Mm -hmm. I think that's what all of us are for each other. I think this, yeah. that's how yeah. this, this podcast yeah. came to be, was just from that constant bettering of each other in, in, in magic, we just decided, well, the, this is valuable for all of us, should be valuable for somebody else, let's put it yeah. out there. Yeah, and so it's a crucial step that accepting that you are going to suck at some point. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the most likely is you're going to suck right now. But if you suck right now, you're going to get better. You might not suck in a week, a month, a year, a decade. I would explain yeah. this. I think you always suck a little. I think you yeah. always suck in some way or another, right? Like I, at least in the common sense of performance anxiety of like not being able to perform, I would say that uh, a lot of us are probably past it. Uh, like at least for myself, I don't feel super nervous going on stage, but I'm still not my most authentic, confident self. And to get there, I have to spout out ideas to just churn out ideas and a lot of them are bad and and see that that push from the front i think even expands no matter what level you are even if you're past that typical connotation of performance i think we still need those people i still need people to say that idea is not your best keep trying and that's so valuable so i like that connor and alex brought that up so uh gentlemen we are uh finishing up on time so connor i'm gonna give you the last word so you can wrap us up uh, and we'll move on to our our last segment. Let me just before we before we even go further, I'll thank you again in a couple minutes. But I love this conversation. This so good. Th this was this, this was, was awesome. a very valuable one in terms of actually getting on stage and performing. So Connor, over to oh, you. Great topic. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, earlier I said perform at a liquor store. Do not perform at a liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that because it was the first thing I could think of. I, I I meant places like Red Lobster, Olive Garden, like. Think of like uh, yes, go to a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> don't that was just the first thing I could think of because there's one right around my house. Just like I was just like trying to grab an air, right? So it's where Connor spends um, most of his yeah, time. This is the liquor store. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> anyway, so once again, this is a, this was an awesome conversation and really a lot of valuable information. I think that performance anxiety, being scared, lack of confidence, these are all things that for a lot of people are inevitable and they're good to in a certain extent because it builds character, forcing yourself, putting yourself in the face of the bull, you know, just having a friend push you on stage, having people telling you that you're bad at the end of the day just makes you better. And you have, and you don't have to go through a bad phase to go, to be good, but it definitely is part of the process. In my opinion. Thank you. Connor. <laughs> I know, I know, Alex. Say it. Just go for it. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the word, Alex. If you, if you must, I'll give you. We have, we have the time. He oh, muted, he muted <laughs> himself. He muted himself <laughs> to avoid saying something stupid. 
<laughs> but yeah, well, just if I, I, I think, unfortunately, like, I, I, let's bring it back to the beginning, right? Because we started bringing up solutions, but at the beginning, our ver the ver very first thing we said was the end board is going to be we don't know because there isn't one solution. So I think here we sort of discussed different approaches that I think could work for a lot of people. Doesn't yeah, mean it's going to work for, for sure. you that's totally. listening right now, but hey, you know what? Give it a shot. Worst case scenario, you're going to suck for a day, which, you know, where I think we it's all did. completely we fine. All do. Oh, for yeah. way more than a day, trust me. Yeah, yeah, man. Way, way more than a day. Well, gentlemen, once again, thank you so much. Uh, before we move on to our last segment, to our assembly, uh, this is my last social media plug. Uh, we are the best way to contact us. You know, it is through Instagram at ongimmick, uh, facebook.com forward slash ongimmick. If you want to watch this podcast, it is on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash ongimmick. We are, of course, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all your favorite podcasting platforms. And if you really want to join us, uh, you can, of course, head over to patreon.com slash ongimmick. And with that... To close us off today, we have Matthew O'Neill with our assembly. Great. So I'm going to be recommending something not magic related, but you could sort of use it to think about magic. Uh, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite songs, and it is Time by Pink Floyd. What a phenomenal track. And it also gets you thinking. If you're comparing, I don't want to compare, I don't want to say cardistry, but I want to say the, the super technical magic versus some, something that might be similar but more beautiful it's you could compare it to a guitar solo where someone is shredding like crazy and wow that's impressive you see that as cool but then the solo where it just hits that one bend you melt and you feel the emotion behind it because it's simple but it's beautiful and i think that's sort of the the message it's not the message of the song but that's a uh, something you can infer from the song great track please listen to it it's amazing Great I would album recommend too. that track as well. Yeah, Pink yeah, Floyd. The whole Dark Side of the Moon amazing. album is phenomenal. <laughs> amazing. Gentlemen, once again, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. This was a great, great day, a great discussion. Uh, we are the Ungimmick crew. Uh, we were joined today by Alexandra, by Connor, Matthew, Kaylin. Sanjeev, Kalen. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for today, for today, you're Kalen. This was, this was really good. Yeah, it was, was really great. Good. It was fun, man. My it's name fun, is Gonzalo. Man. We are on Gimmick. Join us back next week for another one. Thank you so much for listening.